at church and morning welcome uh, Facebook folks uh, I got some guys out working in the church and see if I hear their phones ring this morning uh, we shall see uh, good to be with you this morning uh, we're setting up the Christmas trees here at church uh, this morning so that's exciting as we start getting ready for uh, Christmas like we all are right um, let's see if we get a few folks on this morning uh, give it a moment to there's Lou good morning Lou uh, morning Joe good to see you guys this morning um, Got a couple other folks on. We'll give it a second. I hope you had a good uh, evening. It was nice to be with some of you last night for our Advent family devotional. Uh, good morning, Bertie. Um, as we uh, gathered together last night, good to see faces again uh, and people. Um, and so we're, we're grateful uh, to, to be able to do that. Uh, let's see if we get anybody else. Oh, uh, we got four on. If we got four, we'll go with four. Uh, let's see. Maybe more, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I think I'm going to begin. Um, so this morning, um, you know, obviously in the season of Advent, uh, we talk about preparing our hearts to receive the greatest gift that uh, has ever been given. Um, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Uh, we've been working our way through the book of John, and we've seen how, uh, through Christ, um, we have received the greatest gift of all, forgiveness of our sins and the promise of eternal life. And we are certainly grateful uh, for that. Uh, we see again that, that God, our God, is a generous God. And that really affects who we are as people, because God is generous. Uh, we can be people who are, are generous. And our, vo our verses for today really focus on that uh, from Deuteronomy 16, 17. Uh, All shall give as they are able according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. All shall give as they are able according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given to you. Now this is, you know, kind of interesting. Um, Rachel and I, before we had devotions this morning, we we're talking about uh, how we wanted to uh, be generous at the end of the end of the year um, and where we could give uh, and be people who give uh, because we've been blessed uh, this year and that was before we read these verses uh, this morning and I uh, read this verse and the and the following verse uh, and it just goes to show I think um, that God will bless us we can't out give God uh, and he takes care of us and he provides for us and he gives us uh, more than we could ever ask or imagine. And so from 2 Corinthians 8, 12, if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. The, if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. So we can all be people who are generous, no matter what we have or don't have, uh, because it's a matter of, of the heart. And as those who have experienced our Lord's generosity, um, we can be people who, who are willing uh, to give as we are able, uh, and with eagerness, uh, because we know the Lord uh, will use that for, for good, for our own good, and for the good of, of others. Um, and so today, as we, as we turn uh, to the final chapters of, of the book of, of John, the final, actually the final chapter, John chapter 21, uh, we see again how generous our God is. Yet we also see how it's easy for us to forget that and go back to our old way of, of life. Now, Jesus has risen from the dead. He's appeared to his disciples a couple of times. And now uh, the story picks up uh, with the disciples. Uh, they've gone back uh, to Galilee. And, uh, and they've kind of gone back to their old way of, of life. And along with that, their old way of thinking. And I think that's easy for us uh, to do as well. And I'm Kind of interested to see 
what happens uh, once we the pandemic is over and how are people going to turn just turn back to their old way of life or are they going to are they going to turn to the Lord um, uh, and and experience the blessings that He has to give and and be people who are generous uh, toward toward God and toward others. It's interesting, even though we turn away, God is generous. He comes to us. He uh, reaches out to us. He provides for us in miraculous ways, and he gives us a purpose, as we've been talking about. So let me just share with you. John chapter uh, 21, verses 1 through 14. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. That's up in Galilee, where these guys were from. They would have left Jerusalem. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. I'm sure immediately when Jesus said that, their eyes got wide open because this would have hap this happened to them <laughs> before. When they did, they listened to what Jesus had to say. They didn't question the earlier instance. They questioned it. Uh, Peter did. But this time, uh, they listened right away. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Well, as we read the scripture, a lot of things going on here. A lot of different themes that we see popping up. Uh, but we see, I think, for me uh, this morning, the generosity of, of God. Uh, even as Peter and the disciples uh, were going to go back to their old way of life, uh, Jesus calls them and he calls us to a better way. And it's, it's easy for us uh, to slip into that, isn't it? To slip into that old way of thinking, that old way of, of life. You remember Jesus had said, you're not going to be fishers of fish, but fishers of of men. And what I find so amazing is that God provides for us when he calls us. He gives us a reason, a purpose, but then he doesn't leave us to do it on our own. He provides for us in miraculous, miraculous ways. And he is with us as we carry out the purpose that he has given uh, to us. Now, a couple of things else that are going on there that I find interesting. Um, You've got the fish or the, the fire, um, and Jesus says, you know, the, the disciples saw this fire. Now, the last time they were around a fire, remember Peter had denied Jesus uh, three times. Um, Jesus provides them with this fish and bread. It may have brought them back to that Passover night as Jesus provided for them. But then it was the, the large number of fish, 153. We don't know why it was 153. But what I think is, is most fascinating is that the net didn't break. The net was not torn. It was full. And we may be feeling overwhelmed 
uh, we may be feeling like we can't take any more, um, and yet the net won't break. Uh, Jesus is willing uh, to be with us. Jesus is willing to provide for us, and Jesus is willing to assure us that he's got it under control. Uh, powerful, powerful thing. And then John says here, you know, it was the third time that Jesus appears to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. That number of completeness. Uh, that they had been called and commissioned to go out and to now carry out the mission that God had given to them. And that he would provide for them and their nets would not break. And that Jesus uh, would be with him through, with them through his Holy, Holy Spirit. And I think that tells us, you know, as, as, as I look at that today, uh, that Jesus called us, and it's easy for us to go back to our old way of thinking, our old way of living, but he comes to us and he shows us a, a different way, a better way, calls us to a better way. Uh, he keeps on giving so that we can be people who keep giving, uh, that we can be people who are, are generous with what God has, has given to us. And so... Um, you know, as, as you hear those words in this, in this season that we have a God who is very, very generous with us, be reminded of that again. He's given us the best gift of all. He's given us, given us his son. And uh, we celebrate that in this season of Advent. Um, but we also are, uh, because of that, can be people who are generous and, and use the gifts that we have been given uh, to God's glory and for the good, the good of others. Uh, we got a couple of prayers here today for uh, Eileen Edmonds, uh, Lisa Graziano's college roommate. She is donating, donating a kidney to her cousin Joe uh, today, so we pray for the both of them, that it would just be a successful surgery. Uh, also for, um, for uh, Lou's Aunt Doris, uh, who was placed in hospice uh, care yesterday, uh, and just pray for, for him, uh, for her, excuse me. Uh, we also pray for a friend of ours, uh, Scott Rishi. His uh, stepdad was uh, placed in hospice in his battle with COVID. And uh, his wife, uh, who also had COVID, uh, is, is recovering but is not able to see him. And so uh, those are really tough, tough days to not be able to say goodbye to the one you love. Uh, so we pray for that, that family uh, now as well. All right, let me pray. Father, we come to you today uh, grateful, thankful uh, for your generosity, for your, for your generous heart that you continue to give and pour out uh, your goodness upon us as you offer us forgiveness in Christ, uh, the greatest gift of all. And you uh, give us purpose in life, Lord, uh, to be fishers of, of men, uh, people who are ready to share with others what we have been given, that we can be generous with, with this gift. and Lord, just open our eyes to see the opportunity to do that. Uh, it's all around us. Uh, as we heard yesterday, neighbor, neighbors, uh, an opportunity to, to invite them to, to be a part of our Sunday school uh, just by having a conversation. And so, uh, Lord, open our eyes uh, that we would be people who are generous, uh, sharing Jesus as, as, we, have, as re we have received him. Um, and, and knowing, Lord, when it seems overwhelming that our nets won't break, but that you will provide for us uh, in miraculous ways. Uh, we pray today for Eileen and her cousin Joe uh, as they are undergoing surgery for a kidney transplant. Uh, be with both of them, watch over them, uh, bring healing to them, Lord. Uh, we're grateful for the sacrifice made and the sacrifice given. Um, and just ask, Lord, that all would go well with them. Pray for Doris, Aunt Doris, uh, Lou's aunt, who's undergoing, uh, undergoing into hospice care. And we just ask, Lord, that you would be with her in this, this time, that she would uh, take that walk from this world to the next, uh, Lord, with you by her side. Pray for uh, Scott Rishi's family uh, and his uh, stepfather in these last days of life for him. Give uh, strength and comfort and peace to his wife and uh, to the family, Lord, in these very difficult dates. We pray for all who are battling and dealing with the losses that are real and painful, uh, Lord. Um, help us to have hearts of compassion. 
uh, be willing to, to sacrifice for the concerns and cares of others. And help us to be people, Lord, uh, who are looking up, uh, uh, who behold uh, your goodness, Lord, uh, in this season of Advent and Christmas. Uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, your word today, words of encouragement, words of hope, uh, that you are generous to us so that we can be people who are generous to others. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys have a good day today. Uh, got some guys out there trying to put up trees, so I'm going to go back and see how they're doing, how many, how many red uh, ornaments, the glass bulbs they broke. Uh, we shall see. Sign up for church. Uh, we got church this weekend uh, as we move into our Advent series, Behold, uh, as we are people who look, look up, look in, look for, look out. Um, look forward to seeing you all uh, this weekend. Uh, God's blessings to you, and have, have a great day. Bye-bye.